and I'm not letting you out of my sight. Hey, where'd that me go? You know, it's not easy living in the shadow world. On to the next generation. Prepare to enter the new universe. Wait, what? Whoa! Whoa. Welcome to the Wera Wera Plaza. This is the place where we you owners come together. Oh, right. Hello, Internet. After the success of the Wii, Nintendo obviously wanted to recapture that. And what better way to do so than a sequel console? Well, that's what you'd think. The Wii U was first unveiled at E3 2011, showing off the new Wii U gamepad as well as updated HD versions of Wii games. Of course. The presentation let people know about what made the Wii U great, the special new controller and HD visuals. Well, the thing is, they didn't really show off any new games or even the console itself. Some people weren't even sure of what the Wii U was, thinking it was some sort of add-on for the Wii. So the Wii U's reveal wasn't quite as big as its predecessor. But hey, we haven't even talked about its software library. Why don't we check out a few games? One of the launch titles for the system was a little game called Nintendo Land. It's kind of like the Wii Sports of the Wii U, with attractions based off of classic Nintendo games. There's Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Pikmin, even obscure stuff like the mysterious Murasame Castle. All the minigames are incredibly polished, and they make great use of the Wii U gamepad. Not to mention the setting of a Nintendo theme park is just perfect. The Wii U also launched alongside yet another new Super Mario Bros. game. There was also one for the Wii, but you launched on the same day as another new Super Mario Bros. game for the 3DS. And this is when people started to get tired of the series. None of the games are necessarily bad. As a matter of fact, new Super Mario Bros. U had a lot of fun new additions. But when Nintendo released four nearly identical Mario games in the span of six years, it felt like they weren't using their flagship franchise to its fullest potential. And it didn't help that the Wii U was selling poorly going into 2013, so what did Nintendo do? The Year of Luigi! The Year of Luigi, baby! In celebration of 30 years since Luigi's first appearance in Mario Bros., 2013 was dedicated to the guy. New Super Mario Bros. U got some Luigi-themed DLC with harder levels and the new character Nabbit, now playable. A spin-off of Dr. Mario, aptly named Dr. Luigi, was released with special L-shaped pills. And a version of Mario Brothers named Luigi Brothers appeared in the Wii U's big 3D Mario title. Ah, Super Mario 3D World. It's another 3D platformer in the style of the 2D Mario games like Super Mario 3D Land. People were really hoping for a big 3D Mario adventure to follow up Galaxy 1 and 2, and while this isn't that, it's still a really good game. The game features 4-player multiplayer with 4 characters that each have unique abilities, as well as an unlockable Rosalina with the spin from Mario Galaxy. The soundtrack is great, there's some creative level design. The Captain Toad levels are fun little brain teasers. It's just a really nice little Mario adventure. And the steady high quality releases continued through 2014. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is an incredible 2D platformer that doesn't get the love it deserves. Mario Kart 8 looks the best out of the whole series. Hyrule Warriors is a great mix of Zelda and Dynasty Warriors with tons of things to unlock and collect. And then we get to Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Released a month after the 3DS version, this might not be the most memorable Smash Bros. game, but it's still really fun. There's a good amount of bonus content, a sizable character roster with Mewtwo returning only in this version, and the introduction of Amiibo figures, Nintendo's foray into the Toys to Life industry. By scanning a figure onto the Wii U's NFC reader, you can train up an artificial fighter of your very own, teaching it the best strategies, or feeding it stat boosters, and changing its special moves. All in all, this game is... Is that guy following us? What? What are you doing here? You know this, Henry? Yeah, he's been following me around for a while. And I have a sneaking suspicion that he was responsible for something else. Well, the more the merrier. Maybe he can join us. If you say so. Alright, next up is- Oh, come on, not again. So 2015 was a really weird year for the Wii U. I've already talked about how much I enjoy Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, and this year also gave us great games like Splatoon, Yoshi's Woolly World, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and even Super Mario Maker, one of my favorite games of all time. But then there's Mario Party 10, which reused the flawed car system from the last entry, Devil's Third, an unpolished mess of a mature game that was exclusive to the Wii U for some reason, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, which had most of its content tied to figures and cards, 
and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, a game that had no substance or identity aside from being a tennis game with Mario in it. It felt like Nintendo had given up on the Wii U, and in a way, they kinda had. 2015 was the year Nintendo revealed the NX and finally got into developing for mobile platforms, taking a lot of valuable resources away from the Wii U. And going into 2016 with disappointing release after disappointing release, the Wii U eventually faded away in favor of the next console. That's weird, it shouldn't be this empty. Are you... doing okay? Do you remember We Connect 24? I... uh... It was an online service that allowed Wii users to send messages to each other's systems. It was a great way for people to connect over their love for the console. Until it was shut down on June 27, 2013. Similarly, a messaging application called SwapNote was released for the 3DS allowing users to send drawings to each other. But it was used irresponsibly and swiftly discontinued. And Miiverse, despite being a thriving community of Nintendo fans, was eventually abandoned just like the Wii U itself. Combined with the way they take down fan-made content, it feels as though Nintendo doesn't want their customers to form a community, they don't want them to connect. But I can't strike my own connection. One with the guardian of this world. You have two minutes to escape this world. Start running. What is that? We need to get out of here. Now! Hey, wait! I've talked about a lot of games, but I still have more to say. And I'd like to say thank you for being someone I can talk to. 